closing the aperture, the hole between my lips just a little bit, and my tongue is going up towards the roof of my mouth. All right, what's up everybody, we're back. My name is Adam Meckler. Today we're gonna talk about long tones. Long tones are one of the most important things that you can do on the trumpet and uh, also maybe one of the most boring. You just gotta fall in love with it. You gotta find ways to do it in, in cool ways. I'm gonna give you those things. I'm gonna give you all those cool ways you can do long tones uh, and, and the ways that are gonna really help benefit you, your trumpet sound, your tone, your intonation, all of those things. Uh, even your knowledge of uh, playing in certain keys. We're gonna cover a lot of different stuff. Before we get started, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, uh, and shoot me a comment. Let me know what kind of video you want me to work on, what kind of thing you want me to talk about. I'd be down to make a video uh, based on your comments. So first off, long tones are the truth. We have to play long tones, and we have to do them every day. I do long tones every single day, no matter what. It's the one thing that if, if, I, if I only have a little bit of time, I get my long tones in. The reason why is because I've noticed that I sound so much better when I do them consistently. Let's talk about what is a long tone. So a long tone is essentially just taking a pitch or a set of pitches and playing them as long notes. Uh, and Cat Anderson, the great lead trumpet player for Duke Ellington's band, I mean, he used to do something called the 20 minute G, where he just play a soft G for 20 minutes. It's like the first thing that he would do, 20 minutes of a soft G. Obviously taking breaths, but there's plenty of <laughs> trumpet players who know how to circular breathe. Cat Anderson is one of the all time greatest lead trumpet players in the world, and he would do a G for 20 minutes. Anytime somebody like that, like somebody like Cat Anderson, says that they do long tones, I'm like, okay, I need to be doing long tones. I've done my fair number of 20 minute G's. I like to turn the lights off, get into a vibe, maybe turn on my lava lamp, and then really chill out and just play G's and really focus on my sound. One of the things that I love about John Raymond's new book, The Wonderful Trumpet Professor at the Jacob School of Music in Indiana, uh, is he talks about imagining the best sound you can think of before you start your long tone. I love that idea of getting into a headspace where you're thinking about what is the best sound that I can think of and how do I make that come out on my horn? Uh, and try to and try to essentially manifest that sound uh, out the end of your horn. So for me, that's an amalgamation of all the sounds that I love, like a combination of all the different people that whose trumpet playing that I love and I've listened to over and over and over again. So one of the really important aspects of this is that you're listening to music consistently, that you're listening to great trumpet sounds so that you can imagine a great trumpet sound and thus create a great trumpet sound. Of course, we all have individual and unique sounds and those are beautiful and incredibly important for us to amplify as well. So it's important that you do long tones so that you find yourself, right? So that you find your own sound and then, and then grow in your comfortability with that sound, grow in your control of that sound, and your ability to manipulate that sound, which is essentially what we're doing all the time playing the trumpet. We're essentially trying to get this thing to do what we want it to do rather than the other way around, which is often the case. Oftentimes the trumpet dictates what happens in the relationship. Uh, like Dizzy Gillespie said, Sometimes, some days the trumpet wins, some days you win, and then you die and the trumpet wins. It's also, it's so important to play every single day. This is a huge thing that I can't stress enough, especially for young players that are just getting started. You need to be playing trumpet every single day because your chops just don't last very long when you take a break. The famous lead trumpet player, uh, trumpet soloist band leader from The Tonight Show, Doc Severinsen, once said, if I take one day off, I notice. If I take two days off, my band notices. And if I take three days off, everybody notices. Three days and everybody notices? Yeah. So that's why we need to be doing long tones every single day, be imagining the most beautiful sound that we can think of, and then trying to manifest that sound. When you first start playing the horn every day, the sounds might not be the most beautiful. That's partially why we want to be imagining and trying to manifest, but also, you know, our chops maybe sometimes get beat up. Maybe you had a big day, a, b a big playing day yesterday. Maybe you had a great gig where you were playing a bunch of high notes and you smashed it a little bit too hard. In the morning, you might need to do some pedal tones. You might need to do some horse buzzing just to get your lips kind of deflated. So the first sounds that you make may not be amazing, but it's important not to judge. It's important to just keep going, right? So one of the things that I've been doing also from uh, John Rabin's book is I've been doing something called expanding scale long tones. And expanding scale is essentially when you start on a middle pitch, you go down a half step, up a half step, down a whole step, up a whole step, down a minor third, up a minor third, down a 
third, up a third, down a perfect fourth, up a perfect fourth, down a tritone, up a tritone, and so on. When I'm starting these, I'm also not gonna start with my tongue. I'm not gonna try to force the note to come out. I'm gonna start with air, and I'm gonna slowly move my lips together to try and create a buzz sound. So if I was doing my expanding scale, the next note I would play would be F sharp. I try to rest about as much as I play during this as well. Try to stay relaxed, breathe deep, and let it flow. And try to not get, try not to feel anxious about anything. Try not to think about anything. It's like those kinds of things can kind of raise your heartbeat. And then you can actually sometimes feel your heartbeat while you're playing. You can feel it in the sound, almost like being in a meditative state. The next note we would play would be A flat. So we don't actually go back to G. We go G, F sharp, A flat, F natural, A natural, E natural, B flat, and so on. And sometimes I'm trying to get to a place where that whisper tone comes out really easily. So a lot of times through these, I'll do decrescendos or I'll do crescendo decrescendos along with a metronome. I'll start soft and go eight beats where I'm crescendoing, eight beats where I'm decrescendoing. Or I'll start with four and four and then go eight and eight and then go 10 and 10, 12 and 12 and kind of go up incrementally from there. We'll do the next one with that. So this one is F. So that was 10 up, 10 down. So you can hear that on the back side of my note, I maybe decrescendoed a little too fast, going 10 beats out, 10 beats in. Uh, and what you want is to have the crescendo be very even and the decrescendo be very even. If you have a DAW, if you have a way of recording yourself, you can test this visually by recording yourself and then looking at the wave file and seeing does the wave file go like this, is it even? Um, it's a really great way of, of testing uh, your ability to do an even crescendo and an even decrescendo. So that's one way that I might do these long tones. Sometimes I mix it up, so uh, sometimes I do it with the metronome, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I do it with the drone and sometimes I don't. So the next one would be A natural. I'm still now attacking with just my lips, uh, with just air. I'm not using my tongue, I'm not trying to force the note out. Uh, so we're going to A. Take a breath, rest a little bit, and then the next one on the way down would be E natural, right? We'd go to E natural next. And then from there we go up to B flat. You could ride this out. A lot of times what I do is I ride this expanding scale out all the way until I'm like 
above high C and below pedal C. Uh, so an example of that would be, let's see, if we go... On the bottom, it would be pedal D. And my pedal notes, I really, I'm pushing quite a bit of air on those. And I want to get to a place where I can play those softer and with a little less energy. And that's something that I'm working on right now as a trumpet player. Our next pitch would be C sharp. So I'm trying to keep a really consistent sound. There's a little bit of noise in there, so every time I hear the noise, I'm doing a very slight adjustment uh, with my tongue position maybe, or with my chops. If you've never done pedal tones before, one thing that you can do is you can try to work your way down slowly. So start with F and you can play one, five, one. So you can work on it that way. And try sliding down from the C to the F. Now we're up to D. And near the end there, hearing a lot of noise in my sound next time I do it I'm doing it again I'm not judging it I'm not trying to uh, replay D over and over and over again I'm playing the exercise I'm playing through the exercise so I don't tire myself out trying to play the same note over and over but I am honing in on those things and thinking all right I need to be conscious of that and trying to work it out of my playing <laughs> This is a pretty squirrely note. It's a tough note to hit on a lot of trumpets. Um, a good suggestion is to start from underneath it. And then work your way up into it. That's what I just did. So what you didn't see was that I spent a little bit of time trying to lock in the attack of that note. If I do that too much, I get a little bit too tired to finish the exercise, but I do like to try and get that attack happening so that I'm really zoning in on where that note is and I'm setting my chops up in the position that's gonna really nail that note every single time. I could continue going from there, playing E, F, F sharp, G up above, the, above high C, but then also playing low B, low B flat, low A, below pedal C. Uh, I think it's a really wonderful exercise. Don't try to play these notes screaming loud. I do play a lot of loud high notes in my music and when I'm playing with Young Blood Brass Band and when I'm playing with Nookie Jones, I have my Nookie Jones shirt on, I'll be smashing high notes. But, you know, I'm in this exercise, I'm really trying to create a consistent sound, a consistent attack, something that I can hold for an extended period of time. So I'm closing the aperture, the hole between my lips just a little bit and my tongue 
is going up towards the roof of my mouth when I'm playing these these long tones in the upper register. I want to try using the drone now. This is my amazing Shruti box from India. It was a gift from my wife, Jan and Iberg, wonderful singer. She's got a whole bunch of albums out that I'm usually playing trumpet on. I'm just going to start out with the drone. So you can see that playing along to a drone is a much different experience. What I'm doing right away is I'm listening for intonation. So this is one of the things that you can do with the drone is maybe you, you pick an F drone like I just did, which is G on the trumpet, and you play in the key of G major. That's one thing you can do. So once I've kind of worked my way out of long tone land, usually what I end up doing over these drones is I end up doing some noodling, some improvising, out of time, kind of free, out of time improvising. I love doing that with my Shruti box. I love to also try other chord qualities. So one of the cool things about a drone is that you can play major, you can play minor, you can play dominant, you can play altered. Um, so you can learn certain sets of pitches uh, by just kind of freely improvising over a drone. I highly suggest you do it because I think uh, just gaining some level of ownership over the group of notes is a really important step to then being able to play those notes in time along with a band. This would be an example of using, say, the G R the F concert altered scale or the G altered scale for trumpet. Uh, the G altered scale would be used uh, in any dominant chord situation. Um, you can use it really in any 2-5 situation, uh, major or minor, even if the dominant chord doesn't say flat, nine sharp, nine sharp, five sharp, eleven, whatever. Uh, if it doesn't, even if it doesn't say G7 alt, if it just says G7, you can still play these pitches uh, as long as you play them confidently, because a good band is going to hear you add those pitches in. They're going to put them into their chords, but also it still just sounds great. It sounds great in those scenarios. So here's what it would sound like playing along to a drone. I'm just kind of loosely using those notes, trying to come up with little uh, groups of them that I like, that where they sound good together, things that I kind of 
enjoy playing, that I enjoy the sound of, uh, and also just familiarizing myself with that sound and then trying to find cool stuff. Uh, if I were talking to a young student, a fifth grader, a sixth grader, seventh grader, I would say spend five minutes doing long tones. If I'm talking to uh, a student who's really serious about playing trumpet and they're in high school, I would say do a half hour of long tones. If I were talking to a college student, I would say do you know anywhere between 45 minutes and an hour uh, of long tones. And it depends. It depends on how rigorous you're making it, how much effort you're putting into playing these notes, which I think... Um, shouldn't be a lot. It should really, everything should feel easy, as easy as possible, especially since this might be the first thing you do in the day when you take your horn out of the case. I'll put a link to the Rydell Shruti box. It's really a wonderful Shruti box. I'll put that link in the comment section as well. Thank you all so much for checking out this video. Do your long tones, but also please like and subscribe, comment, and let me know what kind of videos you'd like me to make. Thanks everybody, bye. Thank you.